Hey guys, today's video, I'm jumping in my shed. We're gonna add plugs and lights and switches, and it's gonna be temporary power, so you don't need a permit and you don't need an inspection. Cheers. All right, so the first step that I gotta do is I gotta determine where my power is gonna come through the wall. Now, at a later date, when they wanna make this permanent power, you can dig a trench back to the panel, run your conduit, pull your permit, fill it up with the sand and then the red tape, warning tape, get all your inspections, backfill it, <laughs> fix your sod, but for us today, what we're doing is we're just creating a temporary power scenario. So I'm going to use an extension cord, but we're going to do the penetration of the building as if it's going to be permanent so that you can do the upgrade without having to change the siding, okay? Now, I've already checked inside. We're looking to come over at about 40 inches, okay? And that's about here. Here, probably go. I can make a mark with my finger. Fall in in the air this time of year. We're going to have a bench at about 36 inches on the inside, okay? So I want to bring it in below that. So we're gonna drill in the flat section of the face here. All right, this gives me all kinds of flexibility moving forward down the road. Later on, we'll be able to take my conduit that I'm putting inside the wall, connect to it, put in a pony panel and all that sort of stuff. But today, today is about getting quick power to your workshop. I'm gonna do this on reverse. It's warm, so it should cut nice. And I'm just gonna say, if you're gonna cut vinyl um, when it's cold, uh, it, don't wait till the, wait till spring. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna put it on forward now that I've got a, a little marring here and my drill bit is penetrated. Boom, doesn't take much. Okay, we'll get that piece out of there. Ah. Now we're gonna go through the aspenite. <laughs> Let's change the speed. There we go. We don't want to be there all day long. All right, so now we got a nice clean hole, okay? And we're gonna go and fix that from the inside. All right. So, the first step is to take off your cover and get, your, get it mounted. So what we're gonna have here is the ability, okay, to run pipe coming up to a future panel. All right, for now, we'll just have the wire coming out and then we'll have the wire coming out over here. Once we've got all that put together and established, yeah, we'll have a sealed connection into the building. So what I'm gonna use is a one and a quarter inch screw here. And I'm gonna screw this right to the wall. Go twice. Problem solved, right? Now we'll get to wiring that plug near the end of the video, but first we've got to mark out our layout. So, like I said, the intention here is to have a workbench all along this wall and have power. So that way I can plug my battery power connections and everything else and have working power out here to a certain degree. So there's my 36 mark, that's my counter. I want to have the box starting, that will go to 44. Why not? That's nice and convenient, okay? Now I'm right handed, so that'll be at the bottom of the box, okay? And it'll always be on this side, okay? And we'll come down here and we'll mark one here as well, 44, okay? Just gonna put a box there, a box there. I gotta put a box in the ceiling because I bought a light. Let's open this up and have a look. I wanna know the end from the beginning, right? I don't know how long the cord is gonna be on this bad boy. But a bottle light literally hangs on a chain and then it plugs in, I've got a six foot cord. Fantastic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a box in the middle and we're gonna put it right around here on that side. And then I'm gonna take the wire, come through the top plate over here and we're gonna put a light switch right where it's convenient here next to the door, always on the latch side, never on the hinge side. All right, and we'll put it right here. Okay, beautiful. So, first step. So I'm gonna have a box of little screws, number eights. Okay, like this, we use Robertson here. 
first thing you do is put all your boxes in before you start running any wire, okay? So we're gonna mount them. Here we go. Now these plates come with the extension and the holes, okay? You just need one screw top and bottom. That'll keep that from moving around. Okay. It is one hot day today. Ooh. All right. <laughs> there we go. Now, we got one box over here. Okay. And then, ah, there it is. One more over here. And then what I do is I like to always start from my furthest point and work back to my power supply when I'm doing my boxes. And then when I'm doing my wire, it's the same thing. Now, I'm not sure if your wire is long enough to make the run. It doesn't matter because you're going to multiple boxes. So you can start a new wire at every box location. So just go and go and go until you can't go any further. Now we're done. Fantastic. This is so easy. Now, uh, I have a used coil and I have a brand new coil I'm using 14.2. This is enough for a 15 amp circuit. That's the key here, okay? We're doing a 15 amp circuit. But because A, I'm not closing the walls and B, I'm not creating constant power, I don't have to pull a permit. I don't have to get an inspection. This is from Irwin. Okay, it's a speed bore bit. It has the end on it that you can use on your regular um, impact driver. But this one here, it has three legs that are really sharp, plus an auger on the front to pull it through the wood. So when you put it on a drill like this, you can set it to drill setting, maximum speed. Let me put a light on it. How's that sound? And it'll just eat right through this wood. That is a great drill bit. Okay, we're gonna drill all of our holes for running our wire here first. We're gonna go up surface to there, follow our surface over to here. Yeah, we'll come down this side and then up through here. Oh, disconnected my back. There we go. And then we're gonna run wire to here, and then we're gonna go across. Now, we don't wanna have these wires below the bench. We're gonna have them coming across the top of the bench so they're visible. We don't accidentally ever put anything into it. And you wanna drill right in the middle of the stud, okay? Electrical code, guys. One and a half inches from the front of the stud to the middle of your hole, okay? That leaves you the middle of the stud to run your wire because we never use screws that are long enough to attach anything to a wall that'll make it all the way to that wire. And that is the secret to life. Okay, and we're just gonna run across. Whoa, that's a little bit snug, isn't it? Let's try it. <clears throat> there we go. All righty. And I'm using an eyeball technique where the heel of the, the drill is where the hole is on this side. And then I try to make it look level. This way, I can get my wire going across the wall looking pretty straight. Sometimes making things look straight is the difference between a professional or a rookie looking job. Okay, now you can always measure off the floor. If your floor is level, if you're not sure, you can drop a laser line so everything looks real good because if your floor is not level, your counter's gonna go in probably on a laser line. Put your plugs on one too. Make it all look nice and pretty. There we go. We got holes for everything now. Let's start running some wire. Okay. And then we'll leave that there for now. There we go. Now what I like to do, guys, is I like to actually run my wire 
put my switch or my plug on, then start working my staples to the next box, okay? So I never have to worry about, did I, did I get it all, right? I'm gonna continue, complete every stage one step at a time. I like, with my Ofa knife, this is how you measure. Okay, perfect, you put the blade out. It's the length of the knife. It's always the perfect amount of wire in a box. <laughs> it's a great sheet, especially if you're not an electrician like I am, not. Just a handy guy who's done a lot of work on his own electrical, on permit. I never get any kind of an issue with it. Okay, now, these boxes, they have uh, little tabs on top that move, okay, that create compression on the wire. And when you stick it through that box, you want to get the casing, put a half inch of that casing inside the box. That way you're compressing on the casing and you're gonna have good contact. <sighs> we'll get better shots of this on the other side of the room. This door is gonna make it impossible with our lighting to be able to see this right now. Okay, so I'm shoving my wires in. I'm, okay, I'm pulling forward, creates a bend. Lift it up and push, and it curls right out. Okay, stick it in halfway. Pull my white and my black up. Put my ground wire around the screw. Hang on a second. I did this backwards. Here we go. Now, we're compressed. So I've got a ground wire and I got a white and I got a black. Now, like I said, in this situation, we're making it a switch leg. So, this is how the switch goes in. It has a little sign on it, Leviton. It says top, it makes it as easy as it can. So the black is gonna go to the bottom, and then when you flick the switch, it sends the power back out the other wire, back up to the light, to empower the light. So, all we gotta do here, is take our wire strippers, and on the wire stripper, it has numbers. It tells you what size of wire you're using, okay? So you put that wire that says 14 in the 14 spot and you go like that. That's it. It's not tricky, okay? If your tool stops working, just go buy a new one. It's not worth it to sit here fussing around all day long. Now, one of the things we're gonna wanna do, we're gonna take the tip and we're gonna put a curl on that wire, okay? I don't like using the presets on the back, you can see there's gauges here, little holes. You can just shove the wire in, okay? I don't like using that. I like to wrap the wire around the screw. Gives you better contact long term, all right? Here we go. So we'll do the black first. Mm. Okay, now push the wire in there. My wire is a little bit proud here. There we go. Okay, don't have to drive it on and go crazy. Just a little bit of love will do. And now, in order to communicate with the rest of the world at another late future date, yeah, I'm gonna put a little bit of black tape on this white wire at the end so that everybody else around here knows what's going on. So you could open up, let's say the light stops working, and you open up the switch, you pull it out of the box, and then you see this tape here. You'll instantly know that I wired this as a switch leg, okay? And then you'll know exactly how to solve this problem. So if this switch looks good, you'll know what to do when you get up to the ceiling light box. Okay, here we go. Let's get a pinch on that wire. Okay, there we go. Okay, you see, that's the black. It ends up pulling the wire right around nice and tight. Okay, great contact, it's sitting in that little, little cradle there. Ugh. Then we'll throw the wrist with this on the green. Boom. Now, make sure the top is facing up. What we're gonna do is we're going to Bend the wires like a wave, so that when I push it in, 
everything collapses and it doesn't get bent in a, in a sharp angle. Okay? We line up that to the hole. There we go. Uh, okay. Now we're at the point. I'm going to go to the next box, but before we do, we want to get in our staples. I'm using S2s. Okay, I like to buy them because they're good for a 14-2, they're good for a 14-3, they're good for a 12-2. All the standard residential wire. Okay, you don't have to have an S1 just for the 14-2 and then an S2 for everything else. So this saves you a lot of time and energy. What I like to do is have just a little bit of slack here. Okay, I want to have just a few inches curled up in case I ever need to make future changes. Secret here is these little tabs, okay? These little tabs go to the wood. And then the wire's got lots of room. Here, check this out, okay? The wire's got lots of room. So it's held in position, but it's not compressed into the wood. You go look at houses that are wired in the 50s and 60s. They beat the living tar out of these things to push the wire right into the wood, right? It's a real pain in the butt. And it actually increases the heat in the wire. And it's one of the reasons for all the fires that you get. So, we've learned a lot in the years. Now, it's not just enough to have it get to the hole, okay? We wanna make sure it gets to the hole and it's out of the way. If anybody else ever comes along and wants to insulate this, turn it into a tiny house, you don't wanna have your wire on an angle to the hole here. Try to have it go up and around, okay? Don't need a staple at the hole. A hole is considered a place where the wire is fastened. Remember, the staples aren't here to hold the wire, you know, from moving around. It's to keep the wire from getting in the way of any finishing work. So that's why we have staples. That's why we have code. Up here, we need a staple every five feet. Okay? And what I'm going to do, hey, hey there. <laughs> I think I'm going to go up here on this side. Yeah. I am not closing the ceiling, nor do I ever intend to, okay? There's a good chance that someone might want to put panels on the wall at some point. There you go, that's what I'm talking about. The tab meets the wood, nice and loosey-goosey, okay? That's the look that you're going for. Minimum every five feet. The bigger the roll, the less curve is in it. You're buying these small rolls, they're really tightly wound, so you generally need a little more staples to get where you're going to keep them out of the way. Really, we're just looking for nice and neat and organized. Okay, here we go. Mm. If you uh, are having issues, with your staples, trying to hammer them and you don't want to hurt your fingers. Take your pliers out, grab that little tab, okay? Set it in place, and then you can grab your hammer, okay? Problem solved, okay? You don't have to worry about ripping your hands apart. Now, this is gonna go in the box. We wanna have a little bit extra and then we want to have something to work on. So we're going to cut our wire here. Okay. Okay. The purpose of this switch leg, I'm going to leave all that wire on there. Okay. And I'm going to wire this as a switch leg right now. So you can see the difference between a regular light switch. If you bring your power to the box, then your, your, your light switch power, black was on the bottom. Your white gets moretted to the other white to bring the neutral up to the light fixture. And then the black from the light fixture goes to the top of the box. But in this case, our black and our white are functioning a little different. Okay. 
we go. The reason I'm going with so much wire here, ah, just for convenience for me. <laughs> okay. First thing we're going to do is get our ground. There we go. Okay. Woo! Now, the box in the inside has got a metal plate that connects one ground wire to the next ground wire. But what we don't need is two ground wires in a box. We just need them all on their own screw. Okay? Now, here's our situation. We want to have all these wires cut to the same length. Okay? And there's lots of room in here. Okay, so that's not an issue. And we're going to strip them all at the 14. Am I on the 12? Yep. Yeah. There we go. Get the right hole. Boom and boom. Okay? Now. Whew. So you're aware, um, there's brass screws. And then there are silver screws, okay? Uh, the way to remember it is the brass B goes with the black. So power in, okay? And then there's the ground screw, and then that's the neutral. So neutral here is coming from the panel. So what we're going to do is first thing we're going to do is identify the neutral, and we are going to get that onto the plug, okay? All right, now. We're only using one screw on each side here. And as long as the brass tabs are connected, either one of these plugs will be powered up. All right? If you want to isolate it, then you just break the tab off. But we don't generally do that anymore. Okay, there we go. Nice and long. Now we have neutral. Now, we also want to use the, this as our ground. Okay. All right. Boy, it is hot up here near the ceiling. <laughs> We're going to tighten up the ground. That side of the plug is now done. We're going to twist it over. Remember, it's a switch leg. Take a piece of the tape. Okay. We're going to mark our white wire coming from the switch. We're going to mark it with the black tape to identify it as a hot wire in the box. Okay. There we go. Now everyone's going to know what's going on. I'm going to give that a nice curl. Now, this is now the wire that goes to the other side of the switch, which brings the power Okay, so we'll just follow this like, uh, like we're looking at traffic. So here's my, from, from my panel, here's my power supply. This is my power supply. Now, this takes the power back to that switch. As Soon as I put a red on it, okay? And the way we're gonna do that, this is proper technique. Cross the wires, use your square and pliers. Give it like at least three twists. Okay, you want that knotted up nice and tight so it's never going to come undone. Square end cut on an angle in the bottom. All right. Now we're going to twist this till the wires themselves are twisted as well. Okay. A moret is not on till the wires themselves are twisted. Okay, that's the proper technique. And if an electrical, electrical inspector comes in and opens up your box, and they see that wire twisted like that, that might be the last box they look at because they're gonna know you know what you're doing. Okay, here we go. Ready to sync this sucker. So now we've got our power coming in the black. 
black goes to the switch at the bottom of the switch. When we flick on the switch, the white wire, which has got tape on it, comes over here and becomes a black wire providing the power. And then the neutral, to complete the circuit, goes back to the panel from here. That's as easy as I can explain it. <laughs> now we're going to bend all of our wires so that nothing gets caught up in there. Push everything to the back. Make sure the ground wires are pushed to the back of the box before you screw these up. Because the last thing you want is a ground wire to touch one of these screws once you've put it in the box, guys. All right. OK. Well, there we go. Now, let's get a couple more staples in here. Let's get it down to the other box. And then we can wire the next receptacle in a position where you'll be able to see a lot more clearly. All right, now I'm going to put a loop on it for extra there and then enough to work with. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see any value in this piece of wire, but I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to keep it. Because what you can do, in some situations when you're working in a box, you're going to need just a white or just a black so that you can take, a, take your power and run it over a different part of the switch. So stuff like this is handy. Don't go throwing it out. You can save your bacon. All right, but for us today, this is a non-issue. Now, I know if you're an electrician, you're watching this, you're already in the comments section. Dude, what are you using a knife for to cut your wire? I'm like, listen, I've been doing this for 35 years. Okay, You're not going to get me to buy a different tool now. When I run my wire in here, my knife, I go just to the right of the middle, OK? And I'm turning my blade, so it's actually, it's running along that copper wire the entire time, right? It doesn't have a sheathing. It never gets caught. It never causes any damage. So, it's not but my technique is bad. It's just a tricky. Now here, we push down, bend forward, and when I push and straighten up, it comes out of the box. That's how you get it in there without a problem, okay? And then my sheathing, I'm bringing it right down to here. Now. Um, now we're on a circuit, okay? We're going to be running two hots and two neutrals. So before I can go any further, I'm going to run the rest of my wire through my holes, over to here, over to this box, measure off my little bit of mercy. Okay, yeah, that's good. All right. Stick this in the hole. For the staple, good. And then I'm gonna, again, put a loop on it. Come through to about here. Okay. Let's get our wire in, bend it, push it out. Get the sheathing through. Isolate the wires. This time, I'm going to be coming up, getting a, my screw. I always wrap it clockwise. Okay, and then drive that in. Done. That's the one downside in Canada. We got Robertson in the box, and we got Phillips on the on the fixtures. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt. All right, so. For simplicity, make sure all our wires are the same length. And again, we're going to strip them. OK, so we've got the numbers relating to the gauge of the wire. OK, 16 is household wire, not even. It's like lamp wire. 14 is minimum household, 12 gauge in a lot of cases. 10 and 8 are uh, thicker wires for different reasons. Stoves and that sort of thing, right? Are you using the 14 here? Want to get about an inch and a quarter stripped. If you don't strip enough of it, 
you end up having not enough room to work around in the box. You gotta wrap the whole screw, right? So, make it easy on yourself. Start upside down, pinch the width of this plier, bend it over. Okay? With an inch and a quarter stripped, and you do that, you'll always have direct contact with your screw, and then nice and healthy. Now, uh, in this case, let's start off on the black side. Because now what we're doing is just completing a circuit where the the black and the, and the white both come in the bottom and they come out the top because these tabs are still intact, okay? So we're going to go power in on the bottom. Sorry. Pinch that together. Okay. Power out on the top. Grab that screw. Whoops. Yep, you guessed it. Wrong side. Ah, probably heat getting to my brain. There we go. Ah, ground's usually on the white side, guys. My bad. Here I am showing you what I'm doing. And I screwed up. <laughs> All right, I don't have that open up enough. Okay, let's do this again. That's the top, that's the bottom. Power in on the bottom. It's just for the help of tracing the lines down the road, okay? If there's ever an issue, it's nice to have a system. All right, that's done. Now we can flip it. All right, now we got the neutral uh, coming from the panel on the bottom, going to the next switch or plug on the top. Okay. Let's talk about the elephant in the room because a lot of you guys are going to want to use a shed for tools. Here we go. Curve our wires. And you're like, Jeff, you should be using yellow wire. Use the 20 amp. Use a higher gauge. Use that, use that, that 12, 12 gauge wire. And then you would use this plug. You see the difference? The ones with the T, it's, it's really, these are identified as a 20 amp uh, plug, and these are a 15. The T stands for 20. <laughs> That's how I remember anyway. The point is, is when, when uh, the inspector sees this plug and he sees white wire, you're done, you fail. Because you're not, you're not, you don't have the right power. So then you make sure you get the right combination. If you're thinking of upgrading this so that these could run on 20 amps, or you can run your power tools in here later, then run the 20 amp wire, okay? which is a 12 gauge, not a 14. So 14 is 15 amp, 12 gauge, smaller number, the thicker the wire, carries more power, that's the 20, all right? And I'll say right on the wire. These things are all printed up, so if you're not sure, you can always check. All right, I just wanted to throw that at you real quick. That is for another day, and this wire is causing me all kinds of frustration. Sticking out because of that coil action. Remember, code requires a staple within six inches of leaving a box. And depending on where you live, you might even be allowed to put two wires on that. I prefer to have individual staples for individual wires. Come on, honey. Just call me old fashioned, but ah, all right. Now we're good. Time for the last box. Now, the reason we've got extra wire here, generally it's only for new construction if you're gonna be putting on drywall. 
because sometimes, you know, you've got your wire in here and then they'll come along with the roto zip and, and they'll nick your wire and then you've got to, you got to pull more wire from the back of the box. Well, if you don't have yourself a little bird of mercy here, you got nothing to pull on. Okay. Good. Now, cut them all relatively the same length. This is a really good example, guys, of why when you're not an electrician doing your own wiring, you want to have a process, at least complete a box, staple in everything, and then complete something and staple in everything. Or you're going to make little mistakes everywhere you go, and then you go to plug something in, nothing works. <laughs> you got to check every single location, right? All right. Ah, last plug, and then we'll get to our, our power supply. Again, here, let me show you this way, see? See, there's my, there's my... So it's the width, the width of the tool, my measuring tool. And then I put a bend on it, and bring it all the way around. So it's easy to wrap my screws. Okay. Here we go. All right, here we go. Power in to the bottom. Push that wire right in against that plastic and then you can close the gap. All right. Hold it nice and tight with your fingers and drive it home. And then we'll pick the other power supply. That is part of our connection to the next plug. Okay. And like I said, this is just so that you have a system. So if there's a failure along the way, you know the bottom is the power supply, the top is the feed. Okay. Same with the whites. All right. Now, now this is the bottom because we want to put the mouth of this plug down. Okay. Close it. Screw it. And this is the feed. And then this is your ground. Okay, now we're going to get the face sticking up the right way again. Put a bend in the bottom of the box, bend up here, another bend going down, and another bend going up. Okay, that way everything pushes to the back of the box. Because this ground wire, you don't want it ever coming around the front with power. It'll short it out on you. So that's why we do the S. Okay, now for extra caution, we could show this too. For extra precaution, okay, in a box, you can take electrical tape over your contact points, okay, bring it underneath your screws, over your contact points, okay, underneath the screws. And that is a great ounce of prevention. So even if you're playing with it you can, and you touch the actual live screw, you aren't going to zap yourself. All right? Now, it's not foolproof, so don't bet your life on it, but it is a great way of mitigating or reducing the risk of a fire in your box when you're putting in and taking out your plugs. Sometimes over time, you'll get the wire in the wrong spot. These screws will get a little bit loose. You put a plug in and you know you have to yank it to get it out. It's a little tight. Things start to wiggle and shift and undo and move around and bam, then you get that contact. Okay? So if you're not confident, tape your box while the power's off. Here's our plug. Now the reason these boxes have a trap door is so that you can bring it through, conduit, okay? Do a connections, wiring, morettes. You can this this can be a connection box. It has to stay exposed. All right? and then you can push it in a different direction. So, for instance, um, when you get to the point where you're going to trench, maybe next year, maybe 10 years from now, you can do the trench, you can run your feed wire through, and on the outside, you can bring it up through the pipe, put it through an elbow, put it right through this box, take the cover off, bring it right through the box onto the floor, and then you can add all your glue joints, do all that connection, give it one more tug, and then you can feed it up through the here, through your conduit, right into your panel. Okay, this gives you access as a junction box for the feeding of that line, which is why we're using it. Now, it also 
is a great location, a great opportunity to connect our temporary power, which is this. All right, you can buy these at the Home Hardware, Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards, anywhere else, Canadian Tire, all right? This is it. So this here is just a connection. It's a collar. It's a compression fitting. Okay? So we're going to take this out of the way for now. Set this down. We're going to take the face of this plug off. And that's done, I think. There we go. And it just pops right out. Okay? Now. Now we got to loosen. That is there. Oh, it's already come loose. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're going to take our strippers again. And we're going to have to be a little bit careful here because we have to now have our, our one and a quarter wrap around the screw. And then we want to have sheathing in here. So we don't have a lot of room to play here. So we're going to guess about two inches from the sheathing. So we're going to start pretty darn tight, okay? Okay, again, put the curve on all our wires. Okay, now, now to identify this, right? We have a silver screw. Silver, S, S for steel, brass for black, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is put on the black because that's the one we're most likely gonna screw up. All right, get it around so that you can see this. Okay, I'm gonna pinch that together And then I'm going to do the next wire underneath, behind. We'll get the wire pinched together. And then we'll take over the ground wire to the green. Ground and green. It's just really easy to remember this stuff. Now, I'm also going to twist this to get rid of the depth, OK? So that I don't run the risk of having an issue. All righty. Now, this only will lock in position in one direction. There's two screws that are closer together than the one third, the other one. So make sure you get in the right spot. That's an aggressive thread on that end of plastic. So don't screw it over too, tar too hard there. There we go. We're outside now. We'll get that connection in there. And that gives a pretty decent compression on that wire. All right. But that's not weatherproof, OK? That's going to be a problem. We also have a hole here that goes into the shed, and we don't want bugs in that shed, so we've got to fill that. So first of all, we're going to solve one problem at a time here. Let's make sure that we don't get bugs inhabiting our shed. Just a touch. It's a brand new can. It should work. There we go. Woohoo. We don't want to fill the entire conduit. This is the pest block stuff. It's not my favorite, but... You know, at least it keeps the pests out. Now, second thing, we also have a, um, a hole around our siding, okay? So we're gonna use polyurethane sealant. Don't use silicone. This works. Silicone will break down if it's sitting in any water. So if you're waterproofing something, you're doing it because you're gonna expect it to get water, it means it's gonna fail. So use the polyurethane, and now we're gonna pump this in all along the top and around the sides of this conduit to make a positive connection with where the hell I'm gonna use this with the tie part that's in behind there. Okay? No, it's not pretty. But this is not a beauty contest. This is a functionality contest, okay? Now, later on, when you've got it all sorted out and you know exactly what you're gonna do for a long-term solution here for your power, you can Get a siding tool, you can release one of the joints, okay? You can cut out a bigger piece, you can put in a, a, a siding block, okay? It actually has a, a face and a back and you can nail it in and put it on and make everything look as pretty as you want. But for now, we're protected against moisture, we're protected against bugs, we've got available power. What do you say we plug the sucker in and test out our connections? And then we'll hang our light. <sighs> we're almost done. We're gonna check our power. This light will turn on if there's power. Good. 
These safety plugs, man, you gotta push them at the same time. Good. Here we go. See that? No power. Matt, can you do me the honor and flick on the light switch? Oh, my switch leg worked. Okay, and you can do two of them. There we go. Now all we gotta do is hang my light up here and we'll see how much light we get out of this LED fluorescent tube that never has to have the bulbs changed. Not a bad little gizmo here. Okay. Here's my connection. Listen guys, it comes with this little chain. Okay. And I, I'm not a big fan of pull chains. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna install this. We're gonna pull this once. I'm not gonna attach the string that hangs down. All right, we're just going to get this installed in the ceiling. Okay. Maybe something like that. How's that looking? All right. Okay, no, turn the light switch, and then we'll pull the string once. Okay, now you can do the light switch and back on. We got a shop light. Uh, I'm actually digging it. It's a little bright, don't look at it. <laughs> I'm gonna put a link in the video description. Pick that up from Home Depot. Uh, you can probably order that online, have it shipped to the house. Great little shop light. So you got two things. You can just plug it into something, or I imagine you can hardwire that if you really wanted to, if you're in the mood, but hey, that's awesome. Um, last little thing, details. So you don't drive your wives crazy or your neighbors. When you're putting these on, the screws go vertical. Not at two and, and seven o'clock, not horizontal, they go vertical. Don't ask me why, but the uh, consensus is in. Guys, if you're in the trades or you're running a handyman business, if you're doing a project and you finish painting and you're putting all the cover plates back on, okay, go by hand. Don't over tighten, because that's tight now. Back it up until it's vertical, okay? These things are plastic. Unless they paid good money, $2 a plate for the, the nylon ones, it's just plastic, okay? There we go, that's how you finish it. Quick recap, all right, so we've got our temporary power hooked up, we've got it sealed, we've got everything stapled, we've got everything covered, we've checked all of our power, we've got our switch leg working, the lights installed. Here are the only things you need to know, right from here on in, this is inch and a half interior pipe, okay? So when you go to run your power later on, if you wanna put a 60 amp service in, you can hang your panel here. If you can run your conduit, it usually goes to the middle of a panel. If you're out anything, you can use 22 and a half degree elbows or 45s and move your conduit to wherever you need to go. Middle of a stud is a great location for you for down the road. Feel free to ask your questions in the comments below. Make sure you give this a like, okay? I know nobody teaches electrical for homeowners, but this is really basic stuff that you can do yourself so you don't have to hire an electrician. Because let's face it, three plugs and a light switch? <laughs> Good luck finding one these days. Nobody wants that cheap little job. You can be your own electrician. Cheers till next time.